No longer content resting on its laurels, Toyota has aggressively redesigned the Camry for 2018. To be honest, they probably didn't need to do too much. It's already the best selling car out there. But what they did, they did a lot. It's new from the ground up with a chassis that's lower, longer, stronger, and wider. The Camry hasn't been Cars.com's favorite vehicle. In a midsize sedan challenge, it placed seventh out of ninth. But a lot has changed for 2018. In summary, it's good. Why did the Camry finish seventh in our last comparison? Well, a lot of it was it didn't drive particularly well, and there were numerous safety features, advanced safety features like collision avoidance and blind spot and lane departure assist that just weren't widely available on the more popular trim levels. And both have been addressed in big ways for 2018. The new Camry drives so much better. That new chassis has done wonders to the way the car drives, both in ride quality and handling. Now previously on some of the sportier Camry models, the SE and the XSE, they rode rough, the suspension crashed over bumps, but there really wasn't much reward in handling. That has been completely flipped for 2018. The SE and the XSE handle really well, and the ride quality is good, which is kind of amazing to actually say that because they were able to do it without any adaptive suspension or you know, trick shock absorbers. The SE and the XSE use unique shock and spring tuning. Now the whole suspension has been redone. There's different shock tuning up front from the McPherson struts and then in back, the double wishbone suspension is all new. Now what that means is this is a Camry that drives really well. It hugs the corners, more so than you would expect for this kind of car. The new Camry has a very, very refined ride. So the Camry drives great in the SE and the XSE models, but what about the base model? You know, the LE, the XLE. Well, those drive well too. All of that same suspension goodness and chassis strengthening works really well on the base models too. It's overall just a much more pleasant vehicle to drive in any way you cut it. On the highway, in the corners. Now the big difference comes in wheel size. The XLE with its larger wheels has a little bit more wheel motion when you're going over bumps. The ride is a little busier than the LE which has a very small wheel and a tall sidewell tire that soaks up the bumps a little better. If you're looking for the most comfortable Camry, the LE on the ones I've driven today on this introductory drive is the one that you want. So there are two new engines for 2018. The four cylinder is all new and the V6 is kind of a worked over version of what's been available previously. The four cylinder is going to make up most of Camry sales. Now the chassis is new, the suspension is new, but there's a 2.5 liter four cylinder that makes 203 or 206 horsepower depending if you buy the sportier trim levels. And it's a pretty good engine. A lot of automakers have switched to turbochargers for their base engines, small displacement turbocharged engines, but Toyota has stuck with a rather large displacement 2.5 liter and it works. I mean, it has a lot of low end grunt for being naturally aspirated and it pulls the Camry very well. My one gripe with it though is the noise. It's a little grainy sounding engine and it doesn't sound very refined, even though power is great, fuel economy is good too, up to 41 miles per gallon on the highway on some trim levels, but it's not a completely refined sounding engine. Now the other option, which only 5% of people will buy according to Toyota, is the V6. Now this is the engine that wants to fry the tires. It has a lot of power, and the new eight-speed transmission that's on both the four-cylinder and the six-cylinder manages the power very well. It has this very refined growl. And 
it's surprisingly quick for what it is. That V6 engine in the Sporty XS E package, it's the car very few people are gonna buy, but that is the most exciting car in the Camry lineup. And it's still kind of weird saying fun and exciting when you're talking about a Toyota Camry, but they did it with the 2018. There's a lot of new technology inside the Camry, and it all should sound somewhat familiar if you're shopping for a mid-size sedan, but what the Camry does is combine it all in one package. So on higher end trim levels, you have options like an around view monitor, a head up display, and 4G in-car wireless internet. But there hasn't been a car in this segment to combine all of those until now. And you have to pay for it because it's on the top end trim levels, but it creates a very unique package and all of the features on their own are done pretty well. The head up display is very detailed and it can give you a tachometer as well as an economy gauge to show you how efficient you're driving as well as the adaptive cruise control settings and lane departure warning. The 4G wireless is the faster 4G and not the slower 3G that some cars are still using. And then there's the backup camera, the around view monitor, which is Honestly, it's done better in other places. The screen here, the resolution isn't the greatest with the cameras, and sometimes it's hard to see where the curb is. The interior size is pretty familiar. There's a ton of legroom up front, there's a bunch of legroom out back and headroom, and that's good because when we're reading the specs, it says the seating position is lower to create a sleeker roof line, and the vehicle's overall lower, so I was a little worried that it would sit lower to the ground, be harder to get in and out of, but that's not the case. It's just like getting in and out of the old Camry, but you get that benefit of this very sleek look and you know, a little lower center of gravity for handling. But there's a lot of room inside the Camry and in the trunk. About cargo room though, the back seat on the base models doesn't fold, it's a fixed back seat. You have to buy one of the upper trim levels on the LE and above to get that folding back seat. Now even then, it's not a very large opening compared with some of its competitors. The quality of the Camry's interior is a big step up compared with the old one. On this top XLE trim level, you're looking at soft touch surfaces all over the place, in the front and in the back. On lower end trim levels, the back seat isn't as covered in nice materials as the top trim levels. The door panels are hard plastic instead of padded in this nice material, but up front it's relatively consistent between the trim levels with a few pieces of interior trim that's different between the models. Now, as far as safety features, that's where we knocked the Camry before, but have they come back for 2018? It has standard forward collision warning with automatic braking and pedestrian detection, as well as lane keep assist and an adaptive cruise control. Now the base models and some of the lower end trim levels, the adaptive cruise control is high speed only which means once you get to around 25 miles an hour, it deactivates. But on higher trim levels, it's a full speed adaptive cruise control, which will slow you down all the way to a stop. The Camry's touchscreen is very notable because it has all of the tactile interaction that we want. There's a volume knob, there's a tuning knob. All of the buttons have individual tactile buttons instead of capacitive buttons. As far as the software and what's in it, standard you have a 7 inch screen and in the XLE here we are in the optional 8 inch screen. There are numerous versions of this Entune system. The base though and in all four cylinders it comes with a system that has GPS Scout which is an app that you can download and for the first three years it's free before it becomes a subscription based service but that app on your phone then talks with the car and displays navigation in the screen. 
Now, it's a lot like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, except you have to download an app, and then after three years, you have to pay for it. That should give you a clue that there's still no Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in the Camry, or any Toyota for that matter right now. They are sticking with their proprietary Entune system. Uh, on this model, you have Entune apps with apps like Pandora, iHeartRadio, Slacker, Yelp, and NPR. The Camry does have Siri eyes free, which iPhones can use. Uh, you can talk to your phone and communicate commands from your phone, like text messages and calls uh, through Siri's iFree, but again, no CarPlay, no Android Auto, which is the, the downside here to an otherwise very well done system. The big question is, would this Camry have finished higher in our midsize sedan comparison? Well, this Camry does not feel like an evolution of the previous car. It feels like a completely different vehicle. And while I can't say for certain it would have won the previous comparison, it definitely would have been contending for a podium finish.